Hi guys, this is IGCSC O level chemistry paper 22, November 2017, question one. The diagram shows the arrangement of particles in three states of matter. So, okay. R is supposed to be a solid. Q is almost a solid, but there's slight gap, so there should be a liquid. And P is a gas. P represents a gas. Solid carbon dioxide sublimes to gaseous carbon dioxide. Which row describes the initial and final states? So, solid carbon dioxide sublimes to gas. So, solid and gas. So, the initial state should be a solid, which should be R. So, this eliminates options A and B. And the final state should be P, which is a gas, eliminating option D and making option C the correct option for this question. Question two. During an experiment, a measurement is recorded in centimeter cube. Which apparatus is used? Uh, balance is used to uh, measure mass or weight. A measuring cylinder is used to measure volume in centimeter cube. Stopwatch measures time in seconds. And a thermometer measures temperature in degree Celsius. So the correct option for this question is option B. Question 3. A student carried out paper chromatography on a mixture of amino acids. The student spray and uh, the dried chromatogram with a locating agent. What is the function of a locating agent? To dissolve the amino acids? No, not at all. To form colored spots with the amino acids? Yes, that is the function of a locating agent. To make the colorless spots appear colored. To preserve the amino acids? No. And to stop the amino acids from reacting? Amino acids are not reacting in any case. So the correct option for this question is option B. Question four, which row describes silicon peroxide? Has a giant structure? Yes. Option D is eliminated. Is an acidic oxide? Yes. Option C is eliminated. Conducts electricity? No. Option A is eliminated. Therefore, option B is the correct option for this question. Question five. Why do isotopes of the same element have the same chemical properties? This is because they've got the same number of electrons in them. Although they also have the same number of protons, but their chemical properties are based on their reactions and reactions are based on the number of electrons present in the outermost shell. So isotopes have the same number of electrons in the outermost shell. So the options are they have the same nuclear number. That is not the reason. They have the same number of electrons in the outer shell. Yes. They have the same number of neutrons in the nucleus. That is not correct for isotopes. They have different number of neutrons. They have the same number of protons as neutrons. This is also incorrect. Therefore, the correct option for this question is option B. Question six. Which dot and cross diagram shows the outer shell electron arrangement in a molecule of carbon dioxide? So a carbon dioxide would have a central carbon atom forming a covalent double bond with each oxygen atoms on either side. And since carbon belongs to group four, all of its four electrons are involved in bond formation. Whereas oxygen belongs to group six, two of its electrons are involved in bond formation and four electrons remain unbonded on each oxygen atom. So now in option A, we have got the double bond uh, present with uh, carbon and oxygen on either side, but missing oxygen on, uh, missing electrons on the oxygen atoms. So this is why A is not the correct answer. In B, we've got a single covalent bond forming between carbon and oxygen. So this is incorrect. This is not the answer. In C, we've got a double bond present between carbon and oxygen and four electrons on each oxygen atom 
showing the unbonded pairs. So option C is correct. In option D, we've got a single covalent bond between carbon and oxygen and unwanted electrons as lone electrons on carbon and also unwanted electrons on oxygen. Therefore, the correct option for this question is option C. Question seven. The equation for the reaction between phosphorus and oxygen is shown. Which values of X, Y, and Z balance the equation? So if we have four phosphorus atoms on the reactant side, we should have four phosphorus atoms on the product side. So we allot a value of two to Z and one to X. Now to balance oxygen, five to Z, 10. So we allot a value of five to Y. And this balances this equation. So X should be one, eliminating options C and D. Y should be five, eliminating option B and Z should be two. Therefore, option A is the correct option for this question. Question eight, the relative molecular mass of an alcohol is 88. Its percentage composition by mass is carbon 54.5%, hydrogen 9.1%, oxygen 36.4%. Which row shows the empirical formula and the molecular formula of this alcohol? So in order to calculate the empirical formula, we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in the percentages 54.5, 9.1, and 36.4. So the first thing we would do is we would divide these by their AR value. So this would be divided by 12, hydrogen would, would be divided by 1, and oxygen would be divided by 16. So 54.5 upon 12 will give us a value of 4.54. Similarly, we have hydrogen 9.1 upon 1. So that would give us a value of 9.1 itself. So 9.1 here. And we have 36.4 upon 16 giving us a value of 2.275. So this gives us uh, the smaller value of 2.275, which it, we would use as a denominator for each of the uh, next calculations. So it would be 4.54 divided by 2.275. Then we would have 9.1 divided by 2.275. And then we would have 2.275 divided by 2.275. So this would give us values of so 4.54 divided by 2.275 is equal to 2 9.1 divided by 2.275 is equal to 4 and 2.275 upon 2.275 is equal to 1 therefore the empirical formula is equal to c2h4o so this would make A or B the correct option and eliminate C and D. And now we calculate the empirical formula mass. So the empirical formula mass is equal to 24 plus 4 is 28. 28 plus 16 is equal to 44. So the empirical formula mass is 44. So we will calculate the multiplying factor, which would be 44, 88 upon 44. 88 upon 44 because the molecular formula mass is 88. So we divide 88 by 44 and we end up with a value of 2. So when we multiply C2H4O by 2, we end up with a molecular formula of C4H8O2. And this is the molecular formula. So a has a molecular formula of C4, C2H4O, which is incorrect, and B has the formula C4H8O2, which corresponds to the formula that we obtained, making option B the correct option for this question. Question 9. Which statements about electrolysis of concentrated copper to chloride are correct? Electrons are transferred from cathode to 
copper ions yes reduction takes place at the cathode so copper ions would accept the electrons and get reduced this is correct electrons move around the external circuit from the cathode to the anode no anode is where oxidation occurs so they move from the anode to the cathode this is incorrect next chloride ions are attract atta attracted to the anode yes because anode is where oxidation occurs so chloride ions will lose their electrons and form chlorine so this is correct and hydroxide ions transfer electrons to the cathode no hydroxide ions do not take part in this reaction so since statements 1 and 3 are correct option a is the correct option for this question question 10 which metal combination produces the highest voltage reading in the cells shown so we have iron copper zinc and copper copper and copper and magnesium and copper so the one with the greatest difference in reactivity would be the cell that would generate the greatest voltage so for this we need to write the reactivity series that would be potassium sodium calcium magnesium aluminum zinc iron lead hydrogen copper silver and gold so top to bottom is a decreasing order of reactivity most reactive being potassium and the least reactive being gold so we have iron and copper so copper is here and iron is here this is the difference in reactivity between copper and iron then we have zinc and copper zinc is here and copper is here. Yeah. So there is more difference in reactivity between zinc and copper as compared to iron and copper. Copper and copper, there would be no difference in reactivity. So there would be no cell voltage. And for D, we have magnesium and copper. Magnesium is here and copper is here. This is the greatest difference in reactivity that we can see. Therefore, this cell would generate the greatest voltage, making option D the correct option for this question.